Three men and two women sit in a row of chairs in a random order. Let the event A be that men and women alternate in order, that is man, woman, man, woman, man, find P of A. So in the uh, same way we did in the previous example, we want to consider equally likely outcomes. And so the denominator here will be how many ways can three men and two women sit in any order. And by the multiplication rule, there are five ways to put someone in the leftmost chair, four in the next chair, three in the next chair, two, and then finally one in the right-hand chair. So we have in the denominator here five factorial, which is 120 different ways that people can be seated. Now we come back to the problem statement. Three men and two women sit in a row of chairs in a random order. What the words random order mean right there is that all 120 of these different possibilities are equally likely. So now in the numerator, our job is to figure out how many of those 120 equally likely seatings correspond to this particular ordering. That is man, woman, man, woman, man. So that's what we're after here. And we're going to use the multiplication rule again. First of all, we have to have a man in this leftmost chair. So there's three choices in that case. We have to have one of the two women in the next chair, so there's two choices there. Then this has to be a man also, so there are two men left to choose from, only one woman left here and one woman left there. So 3 times 2 times 2, that's 12. 12 divided by 120 is 1 tenth. Now this is called an analytic solution, and under the assumptions in the question, and that key assumption is that the 120 different possibilities are equal likely. This is exact. In some cases, you run into probability questions that are so difficult that you sometimes want to find an approximate solution. And the other useful thing you have with a Monte Carlo simulation is sometimes a Monte Carlo simulation can check the exact solution or at least give support to. It's very difficult to completely verify, but at least it can support it. What we're going to do is we're going to write this in the freeware R, and NREP is originally set to 100,000. That says this experiment of seating three men and two women in a row of chairs is going to be conducted 100,000 times. The variable count is initialized to 0 and that variable is going to store the number of times out of those 100,000 trials that men and women alternate. So here is a for loop and this for loop it will go through the for loop 100,000 times and the first thing we do is we call the R function sample. When you send sample an argument of 5 it will set up a vector x, which is basically a random permutation. So for example, x might get set to 1, 3, 4, 5, 2. That's one possible permutation that could uh, get assigned to x. And then we ask the question, is x1, which is the integer that's there times x3 times x5 is that equal to 15 and in this case it's not it's equal to 8 but if it ever is equal to 15 that means you have 1 3 and 5 in any order in those three chairs and if we assume that men are odd integers then that will tell us if men and women alternate if that's true, we bump up the counter. And then when we've made it through 100,000 replications, we print out how many times we got uh, them in the uh, uh, odd positions there and the uh, 
uh, first, third, and fifth positions divided by the 100,000, and that is our estimate for the probability that men and women alternate. And I'd encourage you to key this into R and run it four, five, six times, and notice how the output will jump around the theoretical value, which is one-tenth, which we uh, discovered by the uh, analytic solution there.